We're going to go over these three simple cosine chain rule derivative problems. Then at the end, we'll do a quick bonus derivative that involves a couple more layers of chain rule. Here, in case you've forgotten, is the chain rule. So this deals with composite functions. When you've got one function, say g of x, inside another one, f, then to take the derivative, we need to take the derivative of the outside function, leaving the inside unchanged, and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. And that's what we will use for these problems. I'll leave links in the description to some related videos, other chain rule problems, including a video just like this one, but with the sine function. All right, let's get into it. First, we wanna take the derivative of cosine of theta squared. Now, I'm deliberately using some notation here that you might find ambiguous because it's not ambiguous, but it can seem that way when you haven't got much experience with it. The question you might ask here is, is theta being squared or is cosine being squared? And you have to know that it's theta being squared. If it was cosine being squared, then we'd have to write it like this, cosine squared of theta, or we would have to write it like this, cosine of theta squared. Either of those things would mean you're taking cosine of theta and then multiplying that by itself. But that's not what we've got here. We've got cosine of theta squared. That's what this always means. So that means that the outside function here is cosine, and what's in cosine is a thing, theta squared. So to apply the chain rule, we first need to take the derivative of the outside function. Again, the outside function is cosine, so the derivative of that outside function is negative sine, and remember, we need to leave the inside function unchanged. The inside function was theta squared, so we have negative sine of theta squared. Then we just need to multiply by g prime, the derivative of the inside function, and the derivative of theta squared, we're differentiating with respect to theta, so it's just like x squared, it's just gonna be two theta. All right, moving on to the second problem, it's very similar. The outside function is cosine, and what's inside the cosine is two theta theta. So we begin with the derivative of the outside function, the f prime as we call it. So again, that's negative sine. And what is the inside function, the g of x that goes inside? That would be 2 theta. Remember, you do not want to change the inside function. When you take the derivative of the outside, you leave the inside unchanged. But then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function is two theta, its derivative is two, so there we go. I'll quickly point out both of these first two derivatives should probably be written like this if you're interested in form. This is the way most people would probably want them written. Let's move on to the third one. So now in this case, think about what we said earlier. In this case, it is the cosine that's being squared. It's not the theta being squared, but it's actually the function itself, the cosine theta, is getting squared. So the outside function here is the squaring, right? It might be more clear to you that that's what's going on if we write it like this. This is the same thing. It's cosine of theta squared. So the outside function is this squaring. So when we take the derivative, we need to begin with the derivative of of a thing squared. That's just power rule. We just drop that exponent of two down as a factor. So it's two times cosine of theta as if it was two x and you know reduce the exponent by one. So the exponent just becomes one now, but we don't really have to write that. And then we just need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. Multiply by the derivative of cosine theta. The derivative of cosine theta, of course, is negative sine. So this is multiplied by negative sine theta. And we may write this finally as negative two sine theta cosine theta. Theta. That is the derivative of cosine squared theta. A few key points to remember, it's critical that you identify the outside and the inside functions properly, otherwise everything else will be wrong. When you take the derivative of the outside function, make sure you don't change the inside function. And finally, remember that it's multiplication that's happening between the f prime and the g prime. It's the derivative of the outside, leave the inside unchanged, 
and then multiply by the derivative of the inside. All right, with that said, having got a little bit of practice, let's try this bonus example. Give it a try yourself if you're feeling ambitious. In this case, there's gonna be a couple applications of the chain rule, but let's first focus on what is the outermost function. The outermost function, it's not cosine, it is the squaring, right? The outermost function is a thing squared. We could rewrite this if we wanted to as just this whole thing squared. That notation means the same thing. So just like before, the first part of this derivative will just be the derivative of a thing squared. So drop the two down as a factor, it's two times whatever was getting squared. What was getting squared was cosine of cosine of the natural log of theta. But now we have to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function, the thing that was getting squared, was cosine of cosine of the natural log of theta. So for the derivative of that, we again have to use the chain rule. The outermost part of that inside function is this cosine. So the derivative of that will be negative sine, leave the inside unchanged, so cosine of the natural log of theta. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of this inside function. To take the derivative of cosine of ln theta, well, again, cosine is the outside function here, so we'll have to multiply by negative sine of ln theta. And then again, we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside function. The inside function here is the natural log of theta, and the derivative of that with respect to theta is going to be one over theta. And there is our beautiful derivative. It looks pretty nasty, but with practice, this should be pretty easy. I think these nested chain rule problems feel pretty slick once you get the hang of them. So give it some practice. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions. Thank you very much for watching.